Welcome back to the sweatshop. Today we're working on this 2006 Mitsubishi Lancer Rally Art. What we're doing today on the Lancer is we are replacing the tie rods. Obviously, you're probably asking yourself, what the hell is this stuff doing here? Well, that's a story that I'll get into later on in the video. The tie rods are a relatively easy job to take care of. It's not hard. It is a pain in the ass sometimes if you live in the rust belt because the inner tie rod end that threads into this section here can be seized in place sometimes. Now, if yours isn't seized in place, it's gonna be relatively easy to get these things off. It's not a hard job. Definitely something you can do in the driveway. Of course, if you are going to attempt the job, it is advised that you go for an alignment afterwards. Now, I'll show you exactly what I do and how it is I try to keep the alignment as close as possible. In regards to the lug nuts, basically, Basically, we'll show you why it is you don't get a shitty quality lug nut or the cheapest replacement that you can get your hands on. Unfortunately, this is what the customer ended up getting at some point along the way of this car's life. And yeah, well, it could be detrimental to the health of the car as well as you, especially if one of those wheels comes off. That being said, we're going to show you exactly why it is you don't get the cheapest set of lug nuts and replace these tie rods. Of course, before I jump into today's video, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. Now, if you are going to do this in the driveway, employ the use of jack stands because you don't want to end up as a pancake underneath your car. That being said, jack this thing up and pull those front wheels off. Stock size is a 21 mil. This here is a cheap, stupid solution that is dangerous. This here is absolutely pathetic. At some point in this car's life, a mechanic chose to put these on as a replacement lug and was fine with giving the customer this sort of thing. This is supposed to be a flush mount. It may be hard to tell on camera, but that is not flush or true or what would be considered straight. What happens with this material because it is relatively soft is over time, because it's not supported by the lug nut it consistently will put uneven pressure on a small portion of the lug and then you get this effect where the lug starts to grind away into the washer that will create an uneven surface where you're not going to get an even amount of torque distribution throughout the fastener. In short, that essentially means that at some point, if this thing is driven aggressively or for a long time without your lugs being retightened, they will eventually become loose and your wheel will fly off the vehicle. This is a pathetic solution. And if you have a mechanic who recommends such a thing, don't take your car back there because it's just not worth your life. I mean, it. some people may feel that this is dramatic or, you know, just kind of misleading, but it's not because I've worked in this industry for quite a while and I've seen this exact same shit. I don't even know why this sort of stuff is listed as a replacement for this style of wheel. It's just stupid. Anyhow, I hope that you don't think this is a crock of shit and it is something serious. This is a proper replacement. You can see there the lug has a large area that will distribute the amount of clamping force that is applied when you torque this bolt through to the washer. Now, of course, because they use that shitty contraption, it has damaged the wheel slightly. So, of course, we will be retorquing this and it's not to the point where I think we should replace the wheels. So I think we'll be okay. In fact, I'm pretty confident we're going to be okay. So, you know, don't put yourself in this situation. If you need lug nuts for whatever reason, spend the extra money, get the dealer lug nut or a suitable aftermarket replacement. Now that's enough rambling on about that. Hopefully you heed the warning. Go ahead and pull off your wheel. Now, in most of my joint videos, I usually would shake the wheel in order to drive home the point as to how bad the joint is. But with this thing, the joints are so goddamn bad. You can see it really, really easily. That play is not supposed to be there. It's actually worse on the other side. The absolute worst part about this is that this car has been to two different shops in the last four months. And the saddest thing is that no one seemed to detect that this thing was bad. That is just unfortunate and really sad to me. I'm blown away by that sort of stuff and it really angers me because this industry is you know, we have the same sort of, uh, we have the same sort of name that lawyers do. You know, it's hard to find a good mechanic. The problem is, is that the good ones don't make goddamn any real money in regards to the amount of time that they put in. It's just not worth it. And yeah, it's hard. 
to want to stick around in the industry. Anyhow, enough said about that. What we need to do before we start touching this castle nut here is we need to try and see if we can get this cotter pin out and we also need to break free the jam nut. Now, before we do that, get yourself a yellow paint marker. As you can see, I've dripped a bunch of yellow paint. I've drew a line across the top here as a reference point. It is just a rough reference point. What we're going to do now is crack this nut loose. Also, with regards to the paint, I have dripped it around as close to the nut as possible. Obviously, give it some time to dry before you crack this guy open. In case you're wondering, it is a 19 mil. That is the stock size. Obviously, I don't know what size you may have if your parts have been changed. Now, try it with an open end wrench. If it doesn't crack easily, then you're gonna have to go ahead and get yourself a specialty vice grip, which I'll show you in a second here. Yeah, that's not gonna do. That's not gonna do. Let's try the mallet trick. Don't hit your hand. I'm doing this blind because the camera's in the way. Things I do for YouTube, you know. There we go. Well, as I was saying before, this guy could be seized and well, looks like it might be my lucky day. Of course, it's late at night, we'd like to go home and this thing looks like it may give me a headache. Anyhow, we'll cry about it when it actually is a headache. Now, let's go ahead, move to the cotter pin. When you are dealing with a cotter pin, very good sign when it moves throughout the bore of the joint. What you need to do now is grab yourself a needle nose vice grip, really any vice grip that's gonna grab this guy and yank it the hell out. Now, of course, if it's not coming out, break off the ends because the joint's garbage. Anyhow, get the appropriate socket and smash the hell out of it. Go ahead, grab your vice grip, clamp down on this thing, and just yank it through the hole. I would have much rather this thing to be seized than the actual tie rod on the inner tie rod because that can be a pain in the ass. But like I say... I don't know whether it is or it isn't, so I'll cry about it. But I know that, you know, this day has been fun already. The good thing is we're almost at the start of a new day. So I'm hoping that, well, the luck from that day comes into this moment. 17 mil half inch gun and hit it. See, nice and easy. If you had a stressful day like I did and the only thing you have is a hammer, you can beat the crap out of this joint like it owes you money. Not a problem. But if you have a joint separator tool, go ahead and use that. It's easier on your joints and your ears. Go ahead, grab your joint separator tool, thread it into place. Make sure you are careful when threading it into place because you don't want to not get those jaws in there properly and you also want to make sure it doesn't go on cocked because if it does, well, you can damage your joint as well as your tool. And now just hammer it. You're not going to go full throttle, just nice and easy. Once you have some pressure on it, get your hand out of the way because... These things like to fly sometimes. Obviously you can hold it from here. Just make sure if you're gonna hold the jaws that you're not holding anywhere near the joint because when it pops off, it can come off with some serious force. Wanna get a nice shot here, so yeah, that looks good. Bang, baby! Wonderfully. Now, the other side was a bit seized, but this side, well, yeah, that's probably gonna be the same crap. Anyhow, what you need is a vice grip like so to grip this guy here. Do not use an open end wrench, it will slip. Of course, if it does not come off easily because you two are in the rust belt, well, you might need some heat. Now, you don't need a tie rod and socket. It just makes life considerably easier. If I did not have a tie rod and socket, I would be using a wrench on this side. Of course, when you see how quick this thing makes this type of work, you'll probably want to buy one. And then when you find out what the price is from the snap-on truck, you'll have a mild heart attack and walk away without one. Fit that mother over. Put the gun in reverse, hold your vice grip as strong as you can, and hit it. Oh. 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 Well, I just got grease all over my face from this joint. That's not cool. It's disgusting. Oh, look at it, man. It's like a fucking poo-colored grease. Like, ugh. Anyhow, let's, uh, let's try that again. We'll try it again. I'm going to hide behind the rotor here.
Okay, let's uh, stop giving ourselves a headache. I'm gonna go get my pneumatic gun and we're gonna pound the shit out of this thing some more. Okay, you want a tangle tie rod? Why don't you try it again? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens, eh? Yeah, sure beats the hell out of doing it with a wrench. Anyhow, now we're gonna take this garbage over to the table, compare it to the length of our new tie rod, and then adjust or calculate as needed. Take the tie rod. We're gonna put them to the back of each other like a so. What you're looking for is the difference in height. You're not necessarily looking at the casting, but the machined portion here. You can see there that this guy here is slightly higher than this one. So what that means is we would have to adjust our jam nut by putting it in toward the car. That way we give the tie rod a little bit more rod. I don't know why I'm explaining this because none of you guys are going to understand this. It's really rather confusing. And for the ones who do, well, you're going to be smart enough to just take it to an alignment shop. This is only to temporarily get the car from A to B until you have a chance to take it to an alignment shop. So hopefully you understand exactly what I'm saying. But essentially you want this guy level and this end here to be as straight as possible. And you want it to line up with the circular end here because that circular end that guy there indicates the center and the center is something you can actually judge the height of the part off of you can't judge the part off of the casting because well you can see how shitty the casting is on the new one and if we wipe away the diarrhea stains on this one and the rust well you can also see how shitty the casting is on this one that being said let's go ahead and put this bad boy into the car Take your antices with you. What you're gonna do to make your life considerably easier if you ever have to change this tie rod in the future, hopefully you don't, is apply some antices to the rod. It is important that you get a good coating of antices, but you don't want it to be so thick that you can't put the goddamn joint on. So don't gob it on, but make sure you sweep the brush back and forth to penetrate the actual threaded portion of your inner tie rod end. Yeah, that looks legit. <laughs> Grab your new joint and spin it on. Should spin on relatively easy. You do not need to use your tie rod end socket to get this thing on if you did buy one. It's a bad idea. It's only meant to take off the garbage parts. You never use it on a good part because, well, as you can see, that thing is very violent and it will kick the crap out of your good joint. Now you can see here, you need to get a half turn out of this guy here, but our alignment is screwed and that guy is seized. So I'm going to let the alignment guy worry about that because, well, time is of the essence. We're both tired and we want to go home. So we're going to leave this, but if I was trying to adjust it as close as possible, I would be loosening the jam nut in order to make the alignment closer to what was on the vehicle prior to us touching it, if that makes sense. Of course, it was off to begin with, so, well don't really help us in that situation. What you're gonna do is bend your tie rod end into a comfortable shape. I'm talking specifically about the joint so it will slide into our spindle. Once you get it on the spindle, go ahead and thread the nut on. Then you can slowly wind it up. Once you hear the tone start to change, that means it is being tightened. So what you need to do now is swap out for your wonderful torque wrench. The torque spec that was given for this specific nut is 20 foot pounds or 26 newton meters. I am going to be doing 25 foot pounds or 34 newton meters. If you're asking me why I'm changing it is because I think 20 foot pounds is quite low. I'm going with my own torque spec. Let's get an extension because the fucking camera's in the way, son of a bitch. If you're not filming, you won't need an extension. If you are filming, well, good luck. It's a pain in the ass. There you go. We're torqued. Now all that's left for us to do is to go ahead and tighten up the jam nut. Grab your wonderful 19 mil wrench and tighten this guy up. There is no torque spec that I could find for this guy, but, well... 
don't uh, don't strip it, don't break it, you'll be good to go, and don't leave it loose, because if you leave it loose and the tie rod comes out, well, there was no point in fixing the tie rod that was about to break anyhow. Go ahead and tighten it. Yeah, that feels good. Remember, you are going to take this thing for an alignment, so if you tighten the crap out of this thing, your alignment guy is not going to be happy. So yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't gorilla the goddamn thing. It is now time for us to go ahead and put our wheel back on the vehicle. Of course, before you do that, make sure you apply some anti-seize to this section here of the hub. That way, your wheel never gets seized into place. If you don't have anti-seize, white lithium grease will do. Or just some all-purpose grease as well. Just don't gob it on. Go ahead, take these guys and thread them into place. Never run them up with a gun initially because... The chances of cross-threading your brand new bolts is extremely high and well that is a painful thing to go through. Of course the wheel stud area is not the end of the world but well no one wants to deal with a cross-threaded bolt. It just sucks. Force your wheel into the hub, grab your gun and fire away. Aye. Go ahead, grab your torque wrench, set it to 80 foot-pounds or 109 newton meters. That is pretty much all she wrote for this one. All you got to do now is take the car for a test drive. I suggest taking it to your local alignment shop so you can get it aligned. If you don't think the alignment is important, it depends on the health of your tires and how long you've had them for. Because if you want to see tears roll down your cheeks, the next time you look at your tires and they're completely burnt through because you didn't do an alignment, you will want to do an alignment after you replace them with brand new tires. That being said, hopefully you found the video entertaining as well as informative. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. Oh, fuck. Gotta develop my lungs and get longer and longer to speak all that shit. That being said, I'll explain a bit of that in this video. I'm gonna give you the specs and show you how to do those tie rods. But before I do that, I just, I don't know why I, I fucking redundant. Now, if you are gonna do this in the driveway, employ the use of jack stands because you don't want to die underneath your car. Ah, that's too fucking gory. A mechanic put these on? Where the lug starts to grind away. Any hole, any hole. Go ahead and pull your wheel and tire off. It's the same fucking thing. <laughs> now in most of my joint video, <laughs> joint videos. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, where's my gun? Where's the gun? Hello? I found the gun. Take your nut off, bend your joint into a place that's comfortable to get it in to our spindle. That's off camera, so that made no fucking sense. The torque rat, there you go. We are torqued. Now all that's left for us, that wonderful time for us to put our tire, ugh, fuck man. It is now the wonderful time to, uh, what the fuck I'm saying, wonderful time, it sounds stupid. <coughs> Luckily, these are still light. Where the fuck did I put the, oh my god. They're right there behind the gun. I don't know why the fuck I put them there like an idiot. Like, like a fucking stupido. Thanks Lucas. Oh shit. Don't forget to torque your wheels. It is 80 foot pounds or 109 newton meters. Is it? Fuck, I don't know now. <sighs> Cocksucker. Go ahead, grab your torque wrench, set it to 100 and all oh, for fuck's sakes, Jimmy. <laughs> foot pounds, then newton fuckers, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah.